Welcome to Deck Analysis and Testing. Today we're looking at Prank Kids. Prank Kids is a Fusion Link hybrid deck that's not very consistent because we don't have the Link one, but that's fine. All that matters is that it's very cheap. All of the small guys float into another name when it's used as material, and the big fusion is a board wipe. Four monsters. There's a Link 4 that wipes back row, but we don't have it. So good luck if your opponent sets free. Let's have a look at the individual cards. First, we have King of the Swarm. This card is obtainable from the box chip, so it's very easy to get free copies, even though it's uh, ultra rare from a very old box. This card is a really good fusion substitute because your boss monster needs three specific named prank kits to make, so this can be one of them. And also, it can search poly, which is very nice because if you because we don't have the link one, we we oftentimes need a polymerization spell or their own fusion spell to actually start playing, so it's really good at searching that as well. Next is a copy of a free copies of Prank Kids Lamps, it's the fire one, it does a little bit of burn damage, which can come up. If you get into a really long grind game, this can slowly burn down your opponent, and if your opponent is playing a deck like Cosmo, which burns a lot of life points, you can also kind of win the game using this effect alone. And all of the prank kits have the same effect if they're used as a material for a fusion or link summon of a prank kits, you can special summon another named prank kits from your deck. Next is Dropsies, this guy is a blue level 2, and instead of burning, this guy gains you life points. And finally it's the green one, it's probably the best one because this basically foolish burials any prank kits card from your deck to your graveyard. You're usually sending a copy of the fusion because you can grab it back using one of your link 2s by attributing itself to grab it back from your graveyard. For the spells, we're playing one copy of Terraforming because the searches are field spell, which let's talk about it right now. Pragget's Place is basically a searcher for the deck. When you activate this card, you grab any prank kits monster from your deck to your hand. And uh, that basically grabs you whatever you're missing, if you want to make the big fusion, or if you just need two different named prank kits to make the small fusion. It also has two pretty neat effects that reduces your opponent's monster's attack or gains your uh, gains attack for your own monsters. This is uh, pretty useful to just let you beat over stuff and deal more damage, and also it's really useful for chain blocking, which this deck is really good at. Now that we have an option to basically choose a chain order when we activate cards. This card is really useful to just chain block everything that goes before it, including the graveyard effects of your prank kids and just on summon effects of your links or fusions. Next are two copies of Prank Kids Pranks. This card is basically the main way you're going to play if you don't open with the fusion plus two or three monsters because this lets you uh, generate a token for free. Uh, it's not for free technically, you need a discard, but um, it's pretty easy to just have stuff for you to discard anyway. And any prank kits plus the token can make the link to, and that basically starts your plays. We have the one poly for the King of the Swamp, and we have the archetype specific uh, fusion spell. This card is a quick play, it can only be activated during both players' main phase, but it can fusion summon at a quick effect and basically make your quick effect board wipe during your opponent's turn and don't have to worry about all sorts of negates or stuff like that. Let's have a look at the extra deck. We have one copy of Battle Butler. You can play two copies because you technically can make one during your turn and then quick effect fusion summon a second copy during your opponent's turn and that is like two board wipes but that's kind of high roll and not very likely to make and also um, if you just need a battling uh, a battle butler throughout the game, you can just shuffle it back using the effects of uh, Prankit's Pranks, which has a second effect to choose three Prankit's cards in your graveyard, shuffle it back and drawing card, and you can use that to recycle your fusions so you can make them over and over again. This card is really big, it has 3k attack and defense, it can tribute itself, non monster return by the way, so if we get the link one, you can use it two times in a single turn and basically wipes all monsters on the field, from your opponent's field. And that's pretty good, that's your main way of removal, that's basically the only way you can interact with your opponent in archetype for now, because we don't have to link for, for whatever reason, so this is the best that we've got. Next is two copies of 
Rocket Ride. This card is the small fusion. Uh, you only need two Prankids. It can be the same name, but it cannot be substituted because it doesn't list a name. So you can't use something like a King for Swamp. If this card is fusion summoned, it has the effect of reducing its attack by a thousand this turn. Also, it can attack directly. So, uh, the attack directly effect is pretty useful in some situations where you're just slightly off lethal and your opponent has a bunch of monsters so you can just attack directly and win, but most importantly it's also used as a way to chain block any of your other prank kids, even though chain blocking isn't really that useful yet in Duel Links, but it will come up against stuff like Phantom Knights where you, your opponent has a monster in the gates. Next, you can also tribute this card as a spell speed 1 effect during your own main phase to revive two prankets from your graveyard, and that includes the link monsters. It cannot, re cannot revive fusions, but it can revive link monsters, so that is really important as well. We're playing one shooting star dragon for our skill. Our skill is Synchro Storm Rays. We use it basically just for the 1500 life point boost because. You can basically use whatever skill you want it, for this deck, it doesn't really need a skill. I'm just using this for the extra life points, and because the extra deck isn't super tight, we can just afford to play a random Synchro Monster. And we have two copies of the um, Prank Kids Do Do Doodle Do. This is our main uh, combo starter. If we have two Prank Kids on field, this gets you to your archetype spells by when, when it Link Summons, it searches a prank kit spell trap from your deck, and also you can tribute this card, target two prank kits cards with different names in your graveyard, and that can be spells and traps as well, and you add it back to your hand. So this oftentimes grabs you two spells and traps, not just one, because you get one from summon, and then um, you use the effect of fancies to mill another one, and then you use the graveyard effect, uh, you use the tribute effect to grab it from your graveyard. And finally, we have two copies of Bow Wow Bark. This card is Pretty much the same as the other Link 2, except it doesn't surge, and also it can only tribute itself as a quick effect during your opponent's turn instead of your own turn. So you will use the effect of the, the, the rooster during your turn to grab back, and then during your opponent's turn, you will have this card on your field, tribute it, and then grab back your fusion materials so, you can, so that you have enough to make the big fusion. Okay, let's have a look at the expensive version. It's not too much different than the free-to-play version because the deck is pretty free-to-play. I'm just adding another copy of Prank Kids Pranks and the Field Spell because those are pretty good consistency tools. I'm shaving a copy of the uh, King of the Swamp and the rest of the deck is pretty much the same. Uh, you could add some other extra deck stuff like generic links but I you don't really need them too much. It's nice to have like nightmares, like Nightmare Unicorn, just as additional removal because otherwise this deck doesn't have a lot of ways to remove cards, especially for back row. But the deck is playable without them because the deck is just really cheap on its own. So yeah, that's basically it. Let's have a look at the replays. Okay, let's have a look at our first replay. We are going second. This deck does prefer going first, but honestly, because of how the deck works right now without the Link one, it's not too bad going second because you can always just fusion summon from your hand anyway, and that itself can threaten a lot of established boards. Our opponent is playing Cosmo, and um, if you haven't if you have been paying attention, I have talked about how um, Cosmo is really sus susceptible to the burn damage of. Uh, Lampsies and this will come up. So just watch as we fusion summon rocket ride, do a bit of burn damage, and then allow ourselves to attack directly. Our opponent will be making the monster negate, so um, chain blocking really matters in this situation. And then uh, we will go grab back the pranks. Using the Doodle Doo's first effect, using its second effect, we will be grabbing back two guys from the graveyard. He will negate in this situation. We unfortunately cannot chain block here, but that is fine because we still have access to the fusion spell that we can use during our opponent's turn. And our goal here, our goal goal here is to basically uh, make our opponent pay so many life points that they cannot pay anymore. So. Uh, the monster negate is obviously very strong, but it only has a limited amount of uses in this jewel because he will eventually run out of life points, and that is ultimately the goal that we are looking to achieve. 
opponent is popping off, they're going to have a lot of big guys that we unfortunately cannot just easily beat over because our biggest guy only has 3k, so we kind of have to use the effect of the uh, Bastille Butler to pop them. We can't just run over them by battle. Uh, we can technically using the Bower of Arc pointing to our own fusion to make it gain a thousand, but that's a lot of setup and it's not very easy to do. We're just going to aim to just burn our opponent and then now our opponent is in range of a direct attack of our uh, rocket ride, so we will aim to do that, but as our opponent pays even more life points, we can basically just win by activating two effects of Lamsey, so we can activate one of them right now, burning them for 250, and now we are within range for one more Lamsey's activation, and they are also basically locked out of using any Cosmo life point paying effects because they don't have enough life points. And they were going to do Dark Destroyer, which sucks because we can't grab back stuff using the effect of our Link Monster, but it should be doable. Our opponent realizes that they are going to lose by burn damage and just gonna disconnect, I guess. Okay, in our second game, we are going first. Let's see what we can do against a Galaxy Photon player. So, one big weakness of Galaxy Photon is that they, a lot of their monsters rely on them having monsters on the field to actually be able to summon. Stuff like uh, Photon Orbital needs to equip your monster, a Vanisher needs a monster on field, um, the normal the, the Galaxy level 8 guy, Galaxy Knight, needs a Galaxy on field to be able to normal summon without any tributes. So, if we time our fusion correctly and if our opponent plays badly, we can just completely end their turn just by using a single effect of the board wipe. So we're just doing a pretty typical prank its combo using a fusion spell plus uh, the two, two prank its. We're gonna make the link two, we're gonna grab out a bunch of stuff, It's it should be pretty much muscle memory if we play this deck for a bit, just to go through basically the same combo pretty much every single time by using the link to uh, Rooster to grab a spell, mill a second spell, and then grab the second spell using the tribute effect. It should be pretty straightforward if you uh, play this deck for a while. Our opponent is going to MST, which really does not matter, we can just chain the, the uh, quick play. If they were smart, they would have activated during the draw phase, which prevents us from activating the back row, but because it's a new deck and I'm sure not a lot of people are familiar with it. It's reasonable for them to make this misplay. And one thing I want to note about the um, Prank It's main deck monsters is that uh, you can actually use their effects without summoning a monster. So for example, uh, Fancies can mill uh, Prank It's from their deck and then you can choose to not summon a monster. So even though uh, your zones are clogged, you can still use the, the effects to gain life points, burn or whatever. Our opponent will have three monsters, which is a perfect opportunity for us to just wipe them all. And yeah, they we're just gonna set one and pass. Uh, we're gonna try to win this turn, and I should have played more carefully because I was just assuming that a 2k monster should be able to beat over this set monster that he has, and I forgot that Photon Orbital has exactly 2000 defense, so we can't beat over it. If I was a little bit smarter, I would have attacked with a 3k monster and then attack two times with the two Ks, and that would have been game, but yeah, it's just a tiny bit misplay. So yeah, as you can see, if we attacked with the three K first, we would have won. We would have been able to attack two times, but it should be fine. Our opponent only has two cards left in their hand, and they're pretty much out of gas. Our opponent will use MSD, which is good, because that means we have one less card in their hand to worry about. Our opponent will be using your skill, growing themselves a Cloud Dragon, normal summoning Galaxy Knight that they grabbed at last turn that they cannot use. They're going to summon back uh, level 8. We're going to use the effect of the Link 2 right now, because why not? We can't really do anything else anyway. We don't have access to the fusion spell, so it's not like we could stop them from doing their combos anyway. But look at the life points that we have. The the sheer amount of life points that we gain with both the skill and the effect of the, the blue prank kids basically means that even if he makes two uh, galaxy eyes exceeds, they still cannot win because we just are way too ahead on life points. Our opponent will attack, I don't know why they didn't destroy, but we still have 5300 life points, which is ridiculous. 
We're just gonna make the rocket ride. Thankfully, we drew, we top decked the Lampsy, so we can deal just, just a little bit of burn damage, just enough to get to lethal. We're gonna deal 250, attack directly for exactly 1000, and that will be lethal. Good game. Okay, so here we have the third game. I just realized that my new little shibby avatar is blocking the deck list, so I have hidden it. It's kind of like a new thing I'm trying out right now. I, I just think it's pretty nice to have just a, a cute little thing in the corner. So just like tell me what you think about it, if it's like too distracting or if you like it. It's like not quite a VTuber avatar because it's just like a PNG, which I can manually toggle to change the, the expressions. I think that's like more more authentic or whatever the word is. It's like it, it gives you the feel of like PNG tubers or whatever they're called, which I, I, I quite like. Anyway, we're going to go first against Phantom Knights. They're using the old skill. They're using the Treason Phantom, probably because they want to unlock the new skill by playing in ranked. So we will be able to do the, basically the exact same combo as last game. We're going to uh, set up two Link Monsters. They're going to summon two guys, and that is perfect timing for us to just wipe them all. And usually for Phantom Knights, if we uh, pop their normal summon, they will just end their turn immediately because uh, Silent Boots needs a monster on field to special summon and the other guy needs a graveyard setup. So usually this just ends their turn, especially now that they already special summoned the Silent Boots. But because they haven't used a skill yet, they can still do something. And they're going to reveal two from their hand. Thankfully, that means that they have a bunch of monsters in hand and we don't have a lot of back row to worry about because this deck does not like facing against back row because we don't have a back row removal. But our opponent will, will be uh, sending a Ragged Glove, sending a Trap, which allows them to revive a monster, and then when a monster is special summoned, Stayed Greaves can special summon itself, and that still allows them to at least make a rank 3. Honestly, that does not matter too much, because um, it's just a rank 3, which equates to, what, a Dark Rebellion? And at most, it's just a Dark Requiem that we have to worry about which is just one monster negate. It's not too big of a deal. Our opponent's gonna set one and pass, and let's see what we can do. We're gonna use the place that we top decked, and then make a link to just to get our plays going. This card is just phenomenal for this deck. We grab the spell, chain blocked by place. Our opponent activates Hallowed Life Barrier, and that has an, has an interesting side effect. Is that, as you can see, we actually cannot use the effect of Lampsies, because uh, we did use the effect in, in, in the chain, but because he chained Hallowed Life Barrier, we are unable to deal damage to him, which in turn means that we cannot special summon from the deck, because we can only special summon if the first effect goes through. So the same goes for uh, the green one. If you don't have a card to mill, you cannot special summon, but I mean, it doesn't really matter too much because if you have a card to move, you have a card to special summon. But, um, yeah, stuff like that does come up for especially the red one, because if your opponent has something like a Hallowed Life Barrier, we just cannot deal damage and cannot special summon anything. We will use battling, uh, a Battle Butler in our own turn to get rid of that Dark Rebellion, hope to get rid of their follow up. And then, uh, they're just gonna set two cards on end turn. During our turn, we're just gonna try to uh, regain advantage because Pranks is just such a good card. This card just basically gives you infinite advantage as soon as long as this card is on your field. You just keep shuffling back your stuff, ensures that you never run out of stuff to summon from your deck, and then draws you a single card every single time you do it as well. We're going to try to attack. Our opponent has a attack negate, which is annoying, and then they also get to draw two cards during their turn. They draw a card and then realize that they can't actually out our board. We have 8,000 life points and yeah, I'm pretty just gonna scoop. Good game.